Lessons in Love now on Fall, a visit to a high school which takes a progressive approach to sex education. Pupils and teachers talk very frankly about sex in the programme. People my age and my friends started having sex when I was about 11 or 12. I don't know, it was like, if you did have sex, you're a slag. If you don't, you're a virgin. You're a stiff, you know what I mean? And can't win. <laughs> Naomi and her baby Tiffany are visiting her friend Emma and her daughter Kaisi. Both babies are six months old. Hi, Kaisi. Hello. No, you're not in the room. Hello, okay. I had to take her to school today. I had to go and see Deputy Ed. You had to take her with me? Yeah. And uh, she, she was sick all over his office floor. He <laughs> <laughs> stopped. He stopped from it. Britain has the highest teen pregnancy rate in Western Europe. In England alone, it's thought that around 87,000 children have teenage mothers. 16-year-old Emma goes to college and lives with her mother, Bridget, who also became a mum at 16. Emma has no contact with the father of her baby. Neither does Naomi. For her, it was a one-night stand with the boy of 17. I didn't have a relationship with Tiffany's dad at all. And yeah, we did have unprotected sex. I didn't even know I was expecting. Like I told him, when she was two and a half months, I seen him in the supermarket. And I said, hiya. He says, hiya. And I said, uh, do you want to look at your daughter? And that was it, really. That's all I said to him. And he just sort of went green and went, daughter. He claimed Tiffany wasn't his. Naomi had kept her pregnancy hidden for six months. She was too scared to tell anyone. Both Naomi and Emma feel the sex education they were given at school was too little, too late. I don't think they teach enough in schools and things like that. Because my first, first secondary school I went to was like a Catholic school. And they don't believe in things like that. <laughs> so they don't let you know. Do you know what I mean? About contraception and things like that. And then at my second school, they'd already done it by the time I got there. The only information you usually get is in the playground. Yeah, in, in the playground in school and, and that's how you learn about everything yeah. but usually it's half truth you know you get half the information you need but you don't get the full stuff because there's not enough information on sex you go and try it out for yourself the shortcomings of sex education in British schools have been highlighted in a government report on teenage pregnancy many schools worry about upsetting parents Yet the report showed that over 90% of parents and children rely on schools for sex education. That is a child and you're going to kill, you'd kill something, a baby that big. It isn't a baby at that stage, it's an embryo anyway, because you can't have an abortion after a certain stage, so it isn't classed as a baby. The Canon Williamson School in Eccles near Manchester is proud of the sex education it provides. I think the point we're trying to make is, should this 14-year-old girl be in the situation where she finds herself pregnant? No, personally, I don't think she should. Teacher Julie Larkinson is leading a debate on whether a pregnant 14-year-old should have an abortion. Teach kids, 14 years old, she's old enough to understand what's going on when she's having sex. So if she's been caught pregnant, I don't think it's right for her to kill that baby. She might not have known the consequences. She might not have been taught that at school. She's only 14 years old. Maybe she didn't have enough sex education at school. Existing government guidelines on sex education are vague. In some schools, they get as little as one lesson a year. These pupils get six. They learn about sex in the context of a loving relationship in lessons called PSE personal and social education. What I've done is I've given them the information 
and then let them make their own minds up. Because at the end of the day, who are we to say that abortion is wrong or abortion is right? So nobody has changed their view at no. all. Give them the information. That's what it's all about. That's what education is about. That's what sex education is about. That's what PSE is all about. Giving them information, letting them make informed choices. Good morning, beautiful. Naomi doesn't think she got the right information in time. She fell pregnant at 13. And like many teenagers, she was too embarrassed to talk to her mother, Annette, about sex and relationships. I don't think me and my mum are that close anyway to talk like that. She, she thinks she is. Like, oh, they can come and talk to me if they want, but I don't feel I can. I couldn't talk to her about boyfriends. Like, some mums and daughters are really close and they can talk to each other about anything. But I couldn't talk to my mum about boyfriends or whatever when I was younger. No, like, we've, we've, we've talked with quite an open family. It's um, found it quite easy to discuss with each other, you know, problems with relationships or whatever. Oh, dear. We've talked about periods and not so much the sex side of it, but we did discuss how not to get pregnant and how it would be quite easy to come and tell me that if you're having a sexual relationship with somebody, then I need to know. Naomi was a rebel. When she was 11, she started smoking, drinking and getting into trouble. There were nights when she didn't come home at all. I had no idea where she was. I had the police looking out for her. And so I lost control of her completely. And so when I did find out she was pregnant, you know, I weren't surprised. And I suppose in a, in a way, I expected it to come sooner or later, just a bit, so, bit sooner than I thought it would do. It's Annette who takes Tiffany to nursery on her way to work. She also pays the fees. introduce Catherine. Catherine works for Brooke and she's going to come today and give you a talk and then it's open for questions afterwards. All right, so I want you to be polite. The Canon Williamson School provides extra sex education outside lesson time. This is a drop-in session during the lunch break. Today, 11 to 15 year old girls have been given the chance to ask any questions they'd like to Catherine Foxen from Brooke. How does the penis fit in the small hole of the vagina? Right, well, that's, that's an interesting question. Everybody's, everybody's penis and everybody's vagina will be slightly different. There's no such thing as, like, it should be this size or, you know, this size. So everyone's is, is slightly different in size. But a vagina's got... It's got muscles around it and it's sort of elasticated. And so a penis will swell when a lad gets aroused and usually sort of if you're at the kissing stage. And a girl's vagina will get very moist. So... Uh, it, what's nice? Moist, it'll go a bit soggy. So that, like, it, your knickers might feel a bit damp. <laughs> and it's really important that we get moist because otherwise it would really hurt. That's why something like kissing and being caring about each other is really important. Brooke is a sexual health service popular with teenagers. They're accused by some religious groups and parts of the media of promoting underage sex. Afraid of the controversy, few schools invite them in. If people are shocked, then they need to understand that good sex education actually delays sexual activity. And all of the evidence proves that. And so it feels that what we're doing by going into a school and talking about the things that young people really want to know and hear about in a factual, calm way is actually helping them. You know, like, boys get hard-ons. Yeah. What do girls get? I've been told that they get nipple-ons. Yeah, when they see a boy's penis. <laughs> Your nipples, your nipples do go hard, yeah? And we were talking about that, that sort of moisture. That moisture increases a great deal. And girls have got a clitoris. Do you know what a clitoris is? Yeah. Well, my, that, that's a really important bit of a girl. And it's just above the vagina. And the clitoris is the thing that makes you really enjoy having sex. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's called a frill. You can see it with a mirror if you have a... Have you ever examined yourselves with a mirror? No. Who's, who's ever looked down the throat when they've got a sore throat? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> examining your vagina is just as important to do with a mirror. Yes? What's a suitable age to start having sex? Well, I think that is a brilliant question. And what I'd say is, before I have sex with anybody, I want to check out various things for myself. Is this something that I really want to do? Or is it something that somebody's telling me I should do? Am I being pushed into this? Either by my friends, because they're telling me I'm a lesbian if I don't have sex. Is this lad going to use condoms? Am I going to make sure I don't get a sexually transmitted infection? Would I suffer afterwards? You know, supposing he walks off, what would I feel like inside, emotionally? Will my emotional health suffer? And if the answer is, yes, I'm ready for this, emotionally, I'm ready for it physically, we're both well prepared, no one's going to come to harm because of this, then it might be the right time to have sex. But if, if there's no to some of those questions, then it's probably not the right time. It's very different in Europe and places like Holland, it's, which have really managed to lower their teenage pregnancy rate. They are much more open and able to talk about it. We still have all this stuff that we carry around that goes back 100 years and we've got to get rid of it. We've got to walk into the 21st century and be much more open and honest about sexuality and its important part in everybody's lives and particularly with young people. The school is proud of its low pregnancy rate in an area where births to teenagers are high. Only one girl here has had a baby this year. But they have a secret weapon, a computerized baby. Girls and boys take turns to look after it for 24 hours and everyone around them gets involved. After that, <laughs> baby, it's sweet. Normally, I thought it would be the girls doing it, but Steve, look at him holding that. This is what it's like to be a daddy. <laughs> right, Gemma. There we go. Thank you. Now, do you know what you're going to have to do? No. First of all, I'm going to put the control box into the back of the baby. Now, it is already locked, so that means that you can't tamper with it. And when you bring it back to me, I'll take it out and I'll find a reading of how you've handled it, how long you've let it cry, if you've mishandled it. Okay. This morning, 14-year-old Gemma starts 24 hours of motherhood. She's told her teacher, Julie, that she'd like a baby at 16. It's going to be easier to put it onto that house. I think it'd be nice to have a baby because it's yours to keep and, like, you're going to have it for the rest of your life and... I don't know, it's just precious and it's special because it's yours and like nobody else can take it away from you. Right, well the idea of this is that when the baby does cry, which of course it isn't doing at the moment, which will indicate that it either wants feeding or it wants its nappy changing, what you're going to do is you're going to take that key, would you like to hold it, and you're actually going to put it into the back of the baby. Yeah. Yeah, OK. So you keep it like that until the baby stops crying. OK, now if the baby stops crying, you yeah. can then take that care key out. OK? Now what will happen is... I don't think it will put me off, actually, because I'm used to, like, babysitting for my cousins and everything. And they always cry. They don't stop crying. But I always just, like, seem to get them to stop, and oh, I don't think it will put me off. What Gemma doesn't know is that the doll can be programmed to easy, normal or cranky. Her teacher has set it to cranky. Darling, yeah? there comes a time when a woman needs to hear those three little words. I love you. Oh, do you really? Do I really what? Comparing is natural. 
Kelco.com compare prices before you buy. Every week, independent researchers prove that curries means low prices right across the country. Fact. And every week, curries unveil new reductions. Even more top brand savings for curries customers. Fact. Curries keep cutting prices. And that's a fact. <laughs> Nivea Sunspray, now available in Factor 20. The formulation in UV invigorates the mind, so you can take on anything. <laughs> UV with guarana and B vitamins, it's your mid-afternoon wake-up call. There's a new kind of Nurofen, one you can take anywhere without water. For effective relief at the site of pain, new Neurofen Meltlets. You'd like a magnet kitchen for less than half price? No problem. The magnet half price sale is now on with an extra 10% off sale prices for a limited period only. It always makes me feel proud when I'm here. It's where my father came. The crowd loved him. And he loved them. This is him. Gearing up before the race. Yes, he loved the whole thing. The atmosphere, the smell, the sound of the crowd, even the cues. Here he is as he made his world record. Never before has someone sold so many hot dogs. They even gave him this. And just for him, I want to see if I can do the same. Hot dogs! Hot dogs! Hot dogs! He who drinks Australian thinks Australian. Hungry, so you have to put the little key in the back. <laughs> you have to put the little key in the back and hold it in until it makes a cooing sound, and that means it's not hungry anymore. I don't think it's hungry anymore. Oh, yeah, it is. I think he was a hungry boy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> what will your mum say, Gemma? She's got nothing on it. Has she seen it? She's a nana. No, she's not seen it. Hello. Just take it out in the bush. Hello. What did you get? Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It looks nice now, but it isn't crying all the time now, is it? <laughs> Naomi has often been in trouble at school. She's been suspended nine times. Before we had to, you know, I didn't care about anything. And then, like, I was just getting into trouble all the time. But now I've got my priorities in order. I want my GCSEs because I want to go to college and I want a good job. So now I've got some, a goal now because I've got to know that I've got to keep, you know, look after her. Hello, 
But it's hard for Naomi to mix motherhood with being a normal teenager. I don't belong in school anymore. I can't mix. Like, I'm too old for the people in my year um, because they just don't understand because I don't have anything to talk about apart from babies. <laughs> That's my life <laughs> at the minute. Gemma, meanwhile, arrives home with her baby doll. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh look, it's so cute. Oh, it's because you lean that on your stomach, it cries. What she said. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? That's fairly real, don't it? Lovely. Oh, you're a great granddad. <laughs> <laughs> Her mum, Lisa, had Gemma when she was 18 and feels she was too young. She was surprised to hear that Gemma's been talking about having a baby at 16. I was like Gemma, I loved babies, but it's so different when you're know when you sat in night after night and your friends are all out. It really is different, it's very difficult and expensive. Yeah. Where would you think you'd be able to support it? At 16. Well, I'm not having one when I'm 16. No, but if, what I'm saying, if, if it comes to that, how would you support it? You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I get a job. Who would look after the baby? You. I've got a job. Well, then I, I don't know. Gemma's friends have come round to see how she's coping. <laughs> the conversation soon turns from babies to sex. I'm still a virgin and happy to be one. Me too. Same <laughs> here. And I will be until I think I'm mature enough to have it. Yeah. But, you know, but sometimes you do get pressurised into it, don't you? Because usually lads, it's like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> but you don't see a girl going, come on, you know you've got to do it. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, would you still like a baby at the age of 16, Gemma? <laughs> I'll ask the questions. <laughs> well, I'll answer that tomorrow. Meanwhile, Naomi's mum gets her up for school. She's also had a disrupted night's sleep. Oh. Morning. Don't you wake up? Quarter past three. You're crying. Oh. Don't do it again tonight. No. Don't you like babies. Well, you've served your purpose, haven't you? That cry is annoying and it goes through you and ugh, you just probably shut it up. <coughs> my friends all think my baby's cute. Oh, I want a baby because she's cute. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I've got a good baby, so everyone thinks, my God, that sounds really easy, that, and, you know, and then they might think, oh, I'll go on off and have a baby now. you have done. The doll's sensor will tell Julie how many times it was mishandled and left to cry over the 24 hours. 
Right, so 22 rough handlings and 35 minutes you let it cry. <laughs> Whatever happened? It was doing me, I didn't, it just started crying and it wouldn't stop and I just threw it at my mum this morning. I just Hence the rough handlings. <laughs> now, if I remember rightly, when you took him home yesterday, you said to me, this is really what you would like. Yeah. You would like a baby when you were around about 16. Um, What's your opinion now? I'm not having a baby so I'm about 35. That's ridiculous. Nobody should get up at, at that many times as a night, as young as they are. Unfortunately, we can only afford one of these dolls. I really would like more because as there are 650 students in the school, it would be much better if practically all of them could take this baby home. But unfortunately, because of the cost, which is over £200, and the budget we get in the school, we can't afford to do so. At seven o'clock on Sunday mornings, after a week of school and looking after Tiffany, Naomi does her paper round. She says she's lonely and she hasn't had a boyfriend since Tiffany was born. I'm not bothered anymore. I'm just totally not interested in relationship or anything. I can't see myself getting married or anything like that. I think about myself in a house or a flat or whatever when I'm older with Tiffany and I don't see this person with a masked face or anything. I just see me and Tiffany. Don't you it? I wanted to have everything she wants, not to be spoiled, but you know, to be able to have nice clothes and no. have a nice house and go to school and get good marks and well, whatever your mother wants. Want the child to be happy, not be a little scruff or a little scally or something like that. But just what most people want. But I just don't want it to go the same way I went. And the same thing happens with the birds and bees As they flit among the flowers as they nestle in the trees Yes, the same thing happens with the birds and bees And it's happening to us tonight Generation Sex continues next Thursday at 9.30 following a teenage couple who desperately want a baby. If you'd like to talk to someone in confidence about any aspect of sex, contraception, pregnancy or relationships, you can ring the Generation Sex Helpline on 0800 600 444. Lines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and all calls are free. That's 0800 600 444. Or you can visit the Generation Sex website at channel4.com forward slash gensex. There was a time when it was all birds and bees, tadpoles and frogs. Four takes an engaging and sometimes shocking look at sex education since the 20s in The Facts of Life, Sunday at 9.